This presentation is on displacement reactions. So hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you'll be aware that some metals are more reactive than others. You'll be able to make a reactivity series by putting metals in order of their reactivity. And you should be able to use knowledge of metal reactivity to predict the products of chemical reactions. So if we look at the following reaction, if you reacted iron oxide with aluminium, would you know what the products were? Well I can tell you aluminium oxide and iron are left. So you can see that the aluminium has kicked out the iron, has taken the oxygen and left the iron on its own. Now you need to be able to predict the products for reactions such as these. So how ch should you think about how these reactions work? Well, if we use a rather different example. If we take Katie Price and Peter Andre. Now they were attracted to each other. In fact, they were so attracted, they ended up being bonded in holy matrimony. That was until Alex Reed came along. Now, Alex Reed was more attractive, or shall we say, reactive, than Peter Andre. So, what happened? He kicked out Peter Andre and took Katie Price for himself. And then they became bonded in holy matrimony. So how does this relate to the chemical reaction we've just seen? Well, if we look at our chemical reaction, we start with iron oxide. Now iron could be seen as Peter Andre. Now he is bonded to the oxygen, which makes it an oxide. So he's bonded to Katie Price. Let's say the oxide is Katie Price. Then aluminium came along, it's more reactive, it kicked out the iron and took the oxide for itself. So aluminium oxide could be seen as Alex Reed and Katie Price together, and then Peter Andre on his own as iron. So getting back to the chemistry, we talked about metals having different reactivities. And you can put them into what's called a reactivity series. This is where you rank the metals in terms of their reactivity. The most reactive metals go at the top, the least reactive go at the bottom. And it works its way from top to bottom in terms of how reactive they are. For instance, in this series here, potassium is the most reactive, platinum is the least reactive, and then we have four other metals. Calcium is pretty reactive, tin a little bit less so, lead even less reactive, silver near the bottom even le less reactive, and then the least reactive being platinum. Now, two major rules making reactivity series. The first one, they have to be in order of their reactivity. They don't just go in, ran in a random order. Now why is this useful? Because a more reactive metal will displace or kick out a less reactive metal from its compound. Now that second point is very important, so let's see what it really means. Okay, so we've got the reactants of a chemical reaction, lead oxide and potassium. 
Now you need to be able to predict the products for this reaction. And you do this by looking at the reactivity series. Now, the first thing you do is identify the two metals as part of the reactants. In this case, we can find lead and potassium. Now the oxide is what's termed a compound. It's basically the non-metal part which is bound to a metal. So in this case, the compound is an oxide and it's bound to the metal which in this case is lead. So once you've identified your two metals, you see which one is the most reactive. So you can see potassium is above lead in the series, therefore potassium is more reactive. Now the most reactive metal out of the two end up with the compound at the end of the reaction. So, what are our two products? Our two products are lead and potassium oxide. The potassium is more reactive than the lead, so it kicks out the lead and it takes the oxide. Which means you're left with potassium oxide as the compound and then lead on its own. Okay, we're going to go through a few more examples. The next one, our reactants are silver nitrate plus tin. Now I'd like you to pause this presentation and just think what the two products are going to be. So can you do that now please? Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at predicting the products. The products are silver and tin nitrate. Now I'll quickly go through why we get these two products for those of you who didn't get it. Now if we identify our two metals, they are silver and tin. The compound in this case called a nitrate. It's the non-metal, in this case nitrogen and oxygen, bound to a metal. In this case silver in the reactants and tin in the products. So we have our two metals, silver and tin. Now if we look in the reactivity series, tin is above silver and therefore will take the compound. So tin takes the nitrate from the silver and bounds, binds to the nitrate itself. So you're left with tin nitrate and then silver on its own. Okay, next one. Again, can you please pause this presentation whilst you have a think what the products are? Okay. Once again, we have a different compound, in this case a carbonate. As you can see, it doesn't matter what the compound is. It could be an oxide, a nitrate, a carbonate, a sulfate. What really matters is the metals. Now the two products are calcium and potassium carbonate. If we look at our reactivity series, and identify the two metals, they are calcium and potassium. Now even though they're really close together, potassium is above calcium, so the potassium kicks out the calcium, and takes the carbonate for itself, so we end up with potassium carbonate in the products, and then poor calcium has been kicked out and it's on its own. Okay, another one, tin oxide plus calcium. 
Again, please pause this presentation and have a go at protecting the products. Well, hopefully, by now, you've successfully determined that we would have tin and calcium oxide. Again, first of all, you identify the two metals, in this case, tin and calcium. You look at the series, calcium is above tin, so it's more reactive. So calcium kicks out the tin and claims the oxide for itself. Right, the last example. Can you please pause the presentation and have a go at predicting the products? Okay. Now, out of all the examples, this one was most likely to trick you catch you out, sorry. In this reaction there is actually no reaction. Th these two chemicals will not react together. Now why is this? Okay, look at our two chemicals, tin nitrate and platinum. Our two metals are tin and platinum. Let's have a look at the series. Which one is higher? Tin is above platinum in the series. Now remember, the more reactive the metal, the most reactive metal, sorry, out of the two, is going to end up with the compound. Now tin already has a compound. Therefore, there isn't going to be a reaction. Platinum is not reactive enough to kick out the tin. So you're not actually going to get a reaction. It was a little bit of a trick question. But this is important when you're actually doing the chemical reactions. If you try and react two things together and they won't, in this case, it may be because the metal you're adding isn't reactive enough to kick out the metal which is already there. So hopefully, you should now be aware that some metals are more reactive than others. You should be able to make a reactivity series by putting metals in order of their reactivity, remembering to go from least reactive at the bottom to most reactive at the top. And you should be able to predict the products of chemical reactions using your reactivity series. Okay, don't forget to fill in the homework sheet so I know you've watched this presentation.